um you know mother says something which really resonates with me a lot mother says that uh, you have to be really disgusted of your old self Uh, sharing that mother uh, shares something very beautiful uh, which resonates with me and my personal experiences is that one has to be really disgusted of the old self and the old ways of working and acting and speaking and thinking and feeling uh, so that one can make better choices mm-hmm. so uh, and this is what i have felt with myself that if i have not suffered enough following the dictates of my old repetitive loops of thoughts following my patterns following my emotions and feeling disturbing ones then i don't get convinced that uh, i have a higher possibility so but if i have suffered enough badly because of all those repetitive loop, loops of working and speaking and acting and thinking then i can step back and decide something new for myself So I think suffering in that sense is a blessing in disguise because I look at my thought arising again and again, and I ask it, "Haven't I followed you enough? <laughs> Haven't I suffered enough following you? Yeah. You know, something like that." And then I say that I have, and I don't want to create more torture for me mm-hmm. and others. So you know, you choose a new way of working. So suffering is a blessing if one can use it that way. Yes. Actually what's happening is that I am not consciously helping anyone. I am actually I've been on my path since a like long time now and mm-hmm. continue to do so and whatever help happens it happens as a by product as a result as a side effect of it so for example if one is making pasta you know the smell or the fragrance of pasta is a by product of making pasta cooking pasta mm-hmm. so whatever help or workshops or you know online sessions even those happen they are a spillage like a spilling out of on the path and if i now today decide that no i don't want to travel this path anymore for my own self then i cannot help anyone because that spilling will will not happen mm-hmm. so i think uh, it's like we are all walking each other home so talking with you discussing with you reflecting with you is helping me also and mm-hmm. maybe you know opening something for you so it's like a two way process and it's not like as if i am giving something and you know i'm not receiving i'm receiving all the time from the people i interact with yeah question again again can you describe the meaning of mental vital and psychic being mental vital and psychic being see sí. yeah see uh, so for short and also not going into too much detail because mother and shorobindo have all the details that we want on this mm-hmm. mental would be all the thoughts would be my mental being mm-hmm. wherever i keep myself lost okay and also not only lost but also how positively and constructively i can utilize my thought that's also the part of mental being vital is my emotional being you know the emotional being is the one which we all of us need to work actually more on because it's the one which is most sticky it sticks to people it sticks to situations it sticks to past it sticks to yeah. opinions and ideas okay. so this sticky the stickiness is coming from the vital part that's what okay. i feel that the it, it's also emotionally very aggressive and it is the one which feels very disappointed when something doesn't happen my way so that mood up and down of the mood is the part of vital nature the emotional nature and we think that we are the mood 
and we follow the dictate but that's not true we are not the mood we can detach from the mood and take a different decision not attaching ourselves with the mood but mood is sticky you know we all know that how moody we become when something doesn't happen our way mm-hmm. that's because it's very sticky in nature you know it's like it feels like this is me you know it's my mood and how dare that did not happen so something like that and the psychic being is the being of goodness in us uh the psychic being is the being of a uh, good heart awakened heart awakened intelligence so whenever we take actions which are very in very much in good will you know that you are benefiting someone for example you meet someone on the way and you have only 10 rupees uh, talking about indian currency 10 rupees at at hand and uh, you say that i have really enough for today and can i offer all this money to someone else for example you know so that being of good heart which doesn't care much for herself but it offers whatever little benefit it can do to others in any which way any little way uh, that being of good heart is the psychic being which does not demand or expect anything in return whenever any good work work is done yeah while the vital being usually is very demanding ah it, yes it does, it does something then it demands something back yes yeah. okay Yes, and vital. vital being is also, you know, again there are many many layers to it. Vital being is also the being of uh, bhakti, for example, devotion, because since it is very sticky in nature, when it sticks to the divine, it can actually be very devotional towards the divine. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that's this, also this uh, vital and mental have the positive parts also. No, we can use it for for the divine and. Um, for absolutely healing. yes 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 and that's why i was sharing in the mental being when you use your thoughts in a constructive manner you know mm-hmm. when you use your imagination for beauty towards harmony you know uh, then of course uh, it both of them all of them have constructive parts also so that's what our journey is that from the destructive uh, kind of repetitive loop of working we take it towards more illumined more constructive working Perfect. Um, well, I I was asking you this because um, I mean, if someone want to contact you or want to have a workshop or consultation, one one one, yes, uh, they need to have certain knowledge of the language that you speak, or you can. I mean, they have to to I read something English- before. No, no, I mean, no, no. I mean, language yeah. about the uh, spiritual, like a vital, like ah, okay. uh, this kind okay. of things. Uh, no, yeah. with with you, I am with you. I am very easily using this language of Mother and Shurubindo because okay. I know that you are uh, relatively <laughs> verse, well versed with that. But one doesn't need to have any spiritual background at all, okay, in order to approach or want to talk or having a conversation. No. So if uh, and also if they want to join your groups or or. Anything like uh, the readings, uh, yeah. anybody, anyone can join. Yes, anytime. anyone willing can join any time. All sessions are open. Yes, okay, one can join any time. Oh, that is very very nice. And um, Can I ask you uh, why you don't ask for money? Why you don't? Uh... Actually, uh, we ask for money in the sense of if people want to contribute, like if they have benefited from the sessions and they are willing, willingly wanted to donate, then mm-hmm. we we are open for donations. But otherwise, at the moment, uh, uh, the organization or the team that we are, me and my colleague, uh, we are not. too much dependent on money coming from this resource particular resource mm-hmm. of a service and that's why it doesn't matter and we realize that we don't have much needs also you know there are m- many minimalistic things that we can do and we don't need much money in order to survive so there are money coming from other resources which keeps us okay in this aspect that we can do what our heart wants to do uh, whatever we do at living light and yet not 
be dependent on money all the time that money has to come only then we will be able to work okay so it is more of a hearts work if money comes good but if not if money is not coming that is not a problem yeah i was asking this because i mean um I also come in from a folk like tradition and the teacher would Jeff just to say that if the student doesn't pay for the knowledge is very hard that can val evaluate or evaluate uh, what is receiving is receiving yeah yeah I think that's very very true and that's why uh, many workshops that we do at nama for example you would be aware they're all paid workshops <laughs> yes. otherwise we don't we don't take it seriously at all so that's something that's a challenge that we face because if we are not paying then we become very insincere very soon uh, but we have had many many cases of uh, people joining us who remained sincere for a very very long time joined all the sessions contributed and participated Uh, just because of their sincerity also and money was not associated money they gave they gave money but that was out of like they wanted to give it was not that they had to so yeah this money aspect i would agree what you said that somehow we have sincerity associated with money also that if i'm paying for a workshop i have to attend fully uh, yes. if i'm not paying <laughs> then i can attend half and yeah yes, sure. yeah that's there yes yes Yeah, I don't know why, but it's uh, well. He also say, well, uh, our suffering sometimes is the payment for the knowledge. Yes, hmm. like is the pain that we suffer, the the pain that human uh, humanity lives before is a payment for a new era. Hmm. So, like uh, Jesus Christ, no, also. The payment that he made in the cross, <laughs> uh, all these kind of things, mm. no? Yeah, uh, I think money also we we give too much importance to money. Mm -hmm. you know, the the kind of life we have all over the globe, look how important the money is. So when I give money to someone, <gasps> then I feel that you know, oh my God, you know, I have to now be very sincere of because I have given money, money. It's true, <laughs> but but I think that's really our ignorance because uh, I make I I don't have much importance for my hearts. What my heart is wanting, you know, what my really where my joy lies. Mm -hmm. We somehow don't follow usually our hearts and joy. We follow where money takes us. So that also tells us our uh, our current mentality that how much importance we give to money and. That's why if I'm buying a five thousand rupees T-shirt with uh, the money, that holds more importance for me rather than a workshop which is which I'm getting for free. So yeah. <laughs> that's how we are somehow. And so how, um, which practical um, I work as you can give us in order to follow more our heart and not to follow. This money issue. <laughs> I think money is something that we all need. So right now, I'm not too much asking for money in my work because, thankfully, with the mother's grace, I have things that I need. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'll be on the street and I know I don't know if I'll be able to do this work without you know money that much. So. But we have to, as Mother says, we have to know the difference between needs and desires. There is no end to desires. We can always keep on adding that yes, I need is, I yes, I need this. But that is a garb of desire. You know, it's like a, it's a, it's a cloak of desire that I, a uh, cloak of a need that I am wearing. But it's actually my desire that I want. So I would say that practical advice is that keeping things simple. Mm -hmm. in life if uh, we have suffered enough but uh, i don't know if this would serve as an advice for everyone because if i have not suffered enough then i will not be convinced to live uh, live a simple life so okay. first i would say run enough suffer enough <laughs> <laughs> and then if we are convinced of a different life mm -hmm. put effort 
uh, in taming the mind in put effort in bringing the mind to a simplicity in the present moment not making too much complications in the head regarding feelings and past and future keeping it very simple why because we don't know about the next day we we may not be alive the next day so why to make it so complicated so if we have suffered enough then we can take steps do work to keep it very simple and light and in whatever way we can benefit humanity and other beings around us in whatever little sphere we can work we must work and give ourselves okay very nice thank you monica um uh, well um i don't know if you can tell us your web page here and uh, how to yeah, yeah. so it's just it's very simple it's uh, www.livinglight.in living light and living light has two meanings living light is also meaning living very simple and light <laughs> like feathery light okay <laughs> and living light is also that uh, beacon of light you know that you are living as a light that also is living light so each one of us has the capacity to live as light and that's what our yeah effort is at living light so thank you so much cloud